Bir sene. Gidim. Hey young guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today's job is a push arm, also known as a side arm, off a D8T bulldozer. On the dozer there are two push arms, one on either side of the machine that comes from the track frame and goes out to the blade. Essentially what a side arm does is it transfers all the horsepower from the dozer out to the blade. This might look familiar because there was a couple of months back we had a D10 push arm in for some line boring repair. So this one isn't in for line boring, this one has come in because the trunnion mount on the back of the push arm has got a crack in it. This might look similar to people who have seen the D8T blade lift cylinder disassembly and rebuild video. It is basically the same concept. There is a cap that is bolted onto the end of it, which is the bearing cap end, except on the blade lift cylinders you have four bolts. On this you have two bolts and a handful of shims to shim it out to the correct dimension to suit the trunnion ball. So the crack that's in the trunnion cap itself, I've only ever seen this once before this job. The way the other one happened was a rock got over the side arm while the machine was working, got stuck in between the track frames and during the course of operation, the rock had tried to force the push arm off the side of the machine. Another reason these can end up failing is the correct maintenance isn't performed on them during their service intervals. So there are shims in here. When they do get loose, you are supposed to remove those shims in order to re-tighten the trunnion caps against the trunnion ball. If you don't, they end up hammering themselves to pieces or they can even fall off and you will try and walk over the blade with the dozer. The crack that's on the bearing cap is quite severe. It has gone all the way through the bolt hole and all the way around the other side. That tells me that a rock has gone over the side arm and they've put the blade down and it's essentially tried to push the side arm off the machine. There is a bit of damage on the top of the sidearm, which sort of tells me that there has been something big stuck in there that may have contributed or even caused the issue we have. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna replace this entire end and put a brand new one on it. If you were really stuck out in the field or out in the paddock and you didn't have the facilities to do such a repair, you might be able to quickly weld this up and get yourself out of trouble. But being that our customer has machines that don't work locally to him or me, it's not worth doing a half a job to try and save some money. So we have supplied a new end. It is a non-genuine part, but it is a very high quality part. You can tell that just by its overall shape, dimension, the way it has been finished. And to the naked eye, you would probably think it is 100% genuine. So first thing I need to do, I need to take this outside and get it set up ready to do the gouging. Unfortunately, it's not ideal conditions today. It has been showering on and off, so it is quite wet outside. I don't like gouging in the workshop. The noise is just un unbelievably loud in here and the amount of metal dust that's getting around when you are gouging it goes over all the machines and just makes a really big mess so I'm going to take it outside set it up under my little gazebo and I'm going to take this end off My preferred method to remove massive amounts of material is air art gouging. I wouldn't waste my time using oxy or plasma. They are just far too slow and air arc is just one of those go-to things that you know it's going to work. It is loud, but it is very efficient. So I'll use our Lincoln DC 400 machine through our gouging handpiece through some 8mm carbons. Generally, I would run a 10mm carbon, but I have run out at this stage, so it'll take a little bit longer, but we will get through it with the 8mm carbons. The conditions I'm in today are not really ideal for doing this sort of work, being that everything around me is wet and there is still showers. So there are a few precautions, safety precautions I take 
in order to protect myself from being electrocuted or anything like that. My machine does have an inbuilt VRD, which is a system that will trip the machine from running if there is a voltage leak or if there is any danger, something like that. The other thing is I don't leave my gloves out to get wet, so I always use dry gloves, dry jacket, so I'm not a conductor of the electricity, and I also put a pallet or something down to stand on, so I'm not standing directly in the water. Those are just a few of the things I do to protect myself in situations like this. Must have earplugs for gouging. You can go deaf very quickly. You can drag it through the sleeves. So we're going to measure this thing up now to get its location. We need to get this as close as possible to where it originally started from. So a little tip when you're marking stuff like this out, go with big numbers that are easy to remember. I worked with a guy that used to go with random numbers because he'd see a little notch or something in in the job that he could then reference back to. When he'd go and do a finished grind up, he'd often grind that mark away so he wouldn't have a reference point to go back to. So put them back away from where you're working so you don't accidentally remove them.
Right guys, so that's the old one off. It um, went as good as it probably could have. Um, now we're going to get it into the workshop and set up the new one. Mail time. Which one first? <laughs> no, there's still more gifts. Hmm, does it squeak? Oh, that's kind of cute. Some Scottish gifts from Zara. Oh, that must be homie's overseas girlfriend. Hey, 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 calm down. I've got to open it. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. <laughs> He's helping. Hey, hey, hey. Something in here. Oh, wow. This is what he. He was really waiting for this. Look at him. Check him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, here, have the box. Here. Have a look. Little chicken. Oh, hang on. Oh. <laughs> Back to the little one. <laughs> Oh, this is it.
Righto guys, so we've got that tacked on now. That's in the position it needs to be. When you're setting these sorts of caps up on the end of draft arms or side arms, you do need to keep in mind that the blade of the dozer is much wider than the trunnion points where the caps mount to on the dozer. The push arms don't actually run parallel with the dozer, they are kicked off to an angle and the reason for that design is so when they are pushing material, that clears a path for the track gear and the dozer to travel through without walking over material that spilled out the side. The way I set these up usually is I will run a straight edge from the new trunnion cap along the side arm and it should actually meet up with the mount on the front of the push arm where it attaches to the blade. And that degree there is pretty well standard to what the OEM builds them to. It's very important to put these trunnion caps on parallel with the dozer. That way it's pushing squarely onto the trunnion ball and not prematurely wearing things out. I do need to do a bit more grinding up the top here and down the bottom to give myself a little bit more room to get the welding torch in there. So the wire we're going to be using to fill this joint is Hobart XL525 in a 1.2 or an 045 and the gas we're going to be using is Universal Heavy so that's 80% argon 20% CO2. Very good combination of wire and gas for filling such a joint like this. The wire has great impact properties so a sidearm of a dozer going through the stresses it goes through the wire is very resilient to impacts and impact fracturing so Really good wire for this sort of job. First thing we need to do, we're gonna give it a preheat just to take the chill out of it, and then we're gonna start welding.
Right guys, so the job is now complete. Everything fit up pretty good. We did have to modify it just a little bit in order to get it to fit the sidearm, but that's one of those things you run into when you don't use a genuine part. The material welded really nicely, so I'm gonna give the customer a call, let him know his job's finished. Thanks for watching. Try again, go. Try again? I don't even know where I'm gonna start. Go on. Yeah, can you not, can you try not saying right so? Yeah, yeah. Right. Can I just say so? The. Right. The push arm, ugh, I've already <laughs> fucked it. <laughs> All right, say your words then, right. just say them. Yeah. Right. right, so we're not, right, so this, right, so the, right, so, right, so, right, so, every, I'm gonna say so, otherwise the is high. So on the machine, oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. So anything the dozer does, it's fuck. <laughs> and shit can go wrong. Stop. I did. <laughs> Stop. Fuck. Oh, bearing cap, fuck. Oh, fuck me. Oh, fuck me. This is in for repair for... Oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> fucking God, suck and fuck. So my preferred method to m remove massive amounts of ti oh, titties. <laughs> <laughs> through some 8 mil gouging carbons. Fuck off, crow! <laughs> Fuck off, train. Mm. Asshole. <laughs> but, <laughs> dust. <laughs> I did that quick so people can see the top of my head. <laughs> fucking thing. In case anybody spotted it, I have my tipping bin inside my steel bin. The reason for that is the chain came undone which holds the bin to the forklift and as I tipped it forwards the whole bin went in the big bin. What's that? Look, look. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's coming undone. Oh my god, the shirt, the stuff can't stay together. <laughs> Do your shirt up. Oh my goodness. It is for me. Hey, hey, hey. This is not for you. It is for me. Fuck <laughs> not for Curtis. <laughs>